Hyperion base, a secure government installation that stretches three miles below the Nevada desert. Two hours ago, it went completely Bad dark. Homework. The client was able to reconstruct several security grabs from inside the East Wing. The status and nature of the threat is unknown, but whatever it is, it's hostile. I love it when he states the obvious. The world of video games is lousy with mercenaries. Mercs gone rogue, mercs with jetpacks, mercs in jungles, mercs who die in endless waves before you, and mercs that just won't stay dead. So, what makes the four merc team of Fuse stand out? Well, they steal these guns, you see, and all the weird stuff these guns can do makes each merc a class unto themselves. Whether you're encasing enemies in black crystalline death traps, or vaporizing them with a pulse from your protective shield, it's a lot of fun to team up with friends and take on the challenges of the campaign and horde modes in Fuse. Alone, the tepid campaign neither excites nor bores, while horde mode is all but impossible without at least a few leveled up friends. Regardless of what mode you play, with friends is definitely how this slick, near-future shooter thrives, delivering a solid team-based experience with just enough style and substance to keep you entertained. Data log's been redacted, but its first entry is dated... 1947. Hey, what did I just say? I don't care if they got Walt Disney's head in there. It's none of our business. Nuke it, and let's bug out. Does not look like Walt Disney. The campaign tracks our four mercs as they take a job to infiltrate a high security research facility. Things go sour, and this nasty element called Fuse ends up in the hands of some very bad people. But hey, at least you got some cool guns out of it. The narrative that follows is predictable, now we have to stop the bad guys and save the world stuff. Though the main characters and a few villains are expressive and appealing to look at, their personalities are disappointingly limited. At best, they'll make you smirk with amusement from time to time. The environments are similarly serviceable, spanning industrial installations and military outposts that offer decent variety but few moments of beauty or intrigue. They do work well as combat arenas, though, offering plentiful cover positions and flanking opportunities for you to exploit. Though traversing open areas can feel a bit sluggish, you move in and around cover adroitly, thanks to the nicely tuned controls. This helps keep the action feeling crisp, but conventional. Fortunately, you have those cool gadgets. Dalton's shield that can deliver a deadly pulse attack and create deployable cover. Naya's singularity spawning submachine gun. Izzy's crystallizing pellet spewer. And Jacob's super deadly crossbow that can detonate bolts to set people on fire. A few other abilities, including Izzy's health beacon and Naya's temporary invisibility, round out the tactical options that spice up your otherwise standard arsenal. Shattering enemies that Izzy has frozen, shooting through Dalton's shield to amplify damage and XP gain, and generally combining your deadly arsenals to be even more deadly, results in some very satisfying carnage. Flashes of points earned and specific monikers attributed to combo kills add some nice flair to the already sharp visuals. Threshing through waves of enemies is enjoyable enough, and hulking armored enemies pose intermittent challenges that vary the pace of combat. The campaign is relatively smooth sailing when you have a friend or two in tow, and the AI is quick to revive you when you get overwhelmed. Rely on the AI for more than that, though, and you're in trouble. They don't reliably bring effective fire to bear on enemies, and they infrequently make use of combo attacks. You can make fine progress in the campaign alone, but the horde-like echelon mode is a whole different story. Here, you take on waves of enemies, sometimes defending an objective or taking out a tough mech target. Clearly calibrated for teams of leveled up characters, echelon mode is a death sentence for the solo player, even a maxed out one. As you use each character in your roster, they get stronger and unlock new skills and attribute bonuses. Along with the purchasable team boosts, they can make a big difference in echelon attempts. It's a mode targeted at players who have played a significant amount of the campaign and who can use team tactics to survive against tough odds. And luck factors in as well. Sometimes you'll have two mechs spawn on a defend the objective map, and if one or two players goes down in the chaotic cluster of combat, the swarm of foes will keep you down for good. 
Other times you might have leftover power weapons from crates or previously defeated foes that make beating down the big bad guys a breeze. Your echelon experience can vary widely, and this haphazard feel can be unpleasant. It's no fun to feel like you have no chance. Still, the challenge of Echelon is a welcome one for folks looking to flex their skills beyond the bounds of the campaign. And if you've got some willing allies, you can definitely have a good time. And that's pretty much true for the whole game. Fuse is calibrated for people to play together, designed in such a way as to be merely serviceable for solo players, but solid fun for groups of gung-ho mercs. Come on! We gotta clear the target area so we can detonate these charges! Uh -huh. Watch out, come on! Uh -huh. 